another great guest all week long. We're going to be talking uh, Area 51 because of that great book. So you need to go onto my website again. Tim, what book is it? Go ahead and tell everybody. It's called Timothy Green Beckley's Area 51 Warning Keep Out. Yes, and believe me, the Warning Keep Out has a good approach right now. We'll be back in a two and a half minutes. So stay tuned to Night Dreams Talk Radio. Porque no fim eu sei que vou tirar Fala tchau pro seu batom na boca E fala oi pra quem te faz pirar Se você já tá com a mesma sensação Pode vir, gente que eu tô um bugão Tá descontrolada toda essa cara E não para porque a coisa fica mara Vou te ganhar no cansaço Cansaço, no cansaço Vamos fazer um regaço Um regaço, um regaço Colarinha dos amassos Amassos, amassos Vamos fazer um regaço Um regaço, um regaço Seu batom na boca E fala oi pra quem te faz pirar Se você já tá com a mesma sensação Pode vir, gente, que eu tô um não Tá descontrolada toda essa tara E não para porque a coisa fica mara Vou te ganhar no cansaço No cansaço, no cansaço Vamos fazer um rei Vamos fazer um regaço, um regaço, um regaço. O larinho dos amas. If you would like to hear Night Dreams Talk Radio on your local radio station, let them know. Tell them to check out www.nightdreamstalkradio.com and thank you. You are listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio Network from our compound to you worldwide with your host, Gary Anderson. Hey, that is me with our guest tonight, Tim Swartz. We're talking about Area 51. Hey, Tim, how you doing? Still here and having a great time tonight. Oh, so am I. I mean, I love Area 51. Well, I'll let you go to the next step. What happened next at Area 51 besides all these soldiers and military and workers getting irradiated and coming home and giving it and sharing it with their family? Hmm. Well, that's that's the unfortunate thing that, uh, you know, we we really don't know, um, you know, what what happened to, uh, you know, the individuals uh, uh, who who worked there. Now, as for uh, the base itself, the um, the U two that was U uh, two uh, uh, airline. Uh, there was more than uh, one that was operating uh, out of Area fifty one. Eventually, was moved to uh, uh, other locations in the nineteen fifties. But um, other 
uh, top secret black budget military aircraft uh, continued to uh, be tested in the area. You know, you had the uh, SR-71 uh, Blackbird, uh, and if you've ever seen that, I mean, that would be something that, uh, you know, you see that flying around, have no idea what you're looking at. I mean, you would. I mean, you'd think you'd be seeing something right out of a science uh, fiction movie. Uh, you also had uh, the uh, um, um, the uh, B-2 uh, bomber and the uh, stealth uh, fighter aircraft. Those are all uh, test flown uh, out of uh, Area 51, as well as the uh, uh, you know the the test aircraft that were uh, developed originally uh, as the prototypes. Uh, to all of those uh, stealth aircraft. Uh, there has been a lot of, of drone technology that has been developed and tested uh, out of, uh, of Area 51. And, of course, uh, you know, this kind of technology was being tested you know, as far back as uh, probably the 1970s. So uh, some of these reports that uh, people were seeing you know, very unusual-looking uh, aircraft uh, over the area could very well have been, you know, some of these uh, early uh, drone uh, prototypes. Uh, however, I could see why um, the idea that maybe either recovered UFOs or maybe even, you know, back-engineered uh, UFO-type technology uh, was being developed and, and, and flown at Area 51. I mean, there has been some very uh, unusual, interesting uh, films and then eventually you know, videotapes that were taken uh, by people who, uh, I mean, the, the things that were filmed are, are highly unusual. And, and much like you were saying earlier, um, uh, when you were talking about using the uh, uh, infrared uh, binoculars, some of these lights, because uh, mostly that's what you're seeing in the sky, are performing such unusual aerial maneuvers that you can't believe that this would, first of all, that this would be something that could be man-made. And second of all, how could a pilot survive some of the er erratic maneuvers uh, that, uh, that that these lights are are performing, you know, over over these mountains uh, and, and you know, over Area 51. You know, I'm not quite sure though uh, when it came out the you know the idea that that UFOs and Area 51 you know started going hand in hand sometime probably in the 1980s. Um, you know, you had Bob Lazar. Yeah, I was going to say uh, that. Scientist who, yeah, the scientist who came forward and said that, that he actually had worked uh, at S4, uh, which is not uh, not in Area 51, uh, not S4, S2, uh, but, uh, but close by. That was in 1989. Uh, but there had actually been uh, stories coming out before that that, uh, that, that Area 51 had had UFOs and, and aliens there. Now, um, uh, my friend uh, Nick Redfern. I mean, he's uh, he's written you know, a couple of interesting books uh, uh, about Area 51, and, and he has been able to get a lot of uh, declassified um, um, documents uh, through the Freedom of Information Act, and and part of uh, part of his theory is that somewhere along the lines of the 1980s, the, uh, the CIA and the military became aware uh, that, that Russia uh, had, uh, had spies in Las Vegas. Uh, you know, because Russia, you know, they, knew, they knew more about uh, Area 51 long before the uh, civilian population in the, in the United States did. And so they had spies there trying to get whatever information uh, that they could uh, you know, from the personnel you know, who who worked there and would you know come into Las Vegas to to, to blow off some steam. You know, Redfern's um, theory uh, and others have expressed this as well that uh, possibly they started uh, not the Russians but the uh, CIA started using the idea of of UFOs being tested there as kind of like a honey trap to uh, not only 
draw in uh, Russian spies, trying to get more information, uh, but also to uh, try to find out if there were any civilian um, UFO investigators who were also interested in the subject and maybe willing to uh, take a little favors under the table from these Russian spies uh, to you know reveal any information uh, that that they knew. Now, if this was the case, it probably um, was not a well thought out, thought out plan because that that idea then exploded uh, into pop culture. And and it wasn't long afterwards that everybody became aware that there was a secret base, uh, you know, in the uh, 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 Nevada desert, and uh, and then you started having, you know, much like yourself, you know, you had people uh, going down that road trying to uh, get a glimpse of Area 51, and uh, and of course, um, as everyone knows now, and uh, the probably the people who were, you know, thinking about maybe trying to uh, storm the base in a couple of weeks, the the area is full of, of hidden cameras. There's probably um, proximity sensors, you know, in the ground. There are hidden microphones. Uh, you can't get within 10 miles of the uh, of what used to be the black mailbox or the uh, or, or the back gate without them being very well aware that you're there. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and there, was, there was a guy uh, just, uh, I think it was, wasn't it, uh, earlier this year, who uh, 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 drove his, uh, what was it, it was SUV, you know, onto the grounds, got, got a couple of miles in uh, before they finally uh, stopped him. And then when he got out, he had something in his hands that they told him to, to drop, and he wouldn't, and they shot and killed him. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but the weird thing about that case is that we have no idea. They, there was never any uh, news release on who this guy was, why he was there, or, or anything. We just know that, you know, somebody got shot and killed there, which, I mean, that's, that's an unusual circumstance. That's, you know, that, that doesn't happen very often. Well, we not many, of. not many people go walking in or driving into Area Fifty One, you know, And if they well, tell you to drop it, yeah. you drop it. Maybe he thought he you had drop. some. Maybe he thought he had some alien technology he wanted to show somebody. But I, I tell you, he, yeah, I was on air when that happened, and because I, I have a news service I, I subscribe to, it flashed on my other computer, and I, I told everybody on it right when it happened, uh, when it was released. And I tell you, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to get in trouble. Heather Wade, about two years ago or a year and a half ago, when she, one of her shows, when she, before she went off and back on, tried to get people to storm. She was setting up a date for a storm area 51 to prove that there, you know, was aliens and they, she wanted disclosure and all this stuff. And I got in an argument with her and I said, that's, you know, that's the dumbest thing you could ever even get any of your listeners to do. But then all of a sudden this thing started circulating around and I think it's probably somebody that listened to her, you know, with her mm-hmm. ideas storming it. And again, I'm, I want to stress anybody, don't do it. It's not worth it. It's not worth being arrested. It's not worth maybe getting shot because if a group of people went in there, you know, is this like Kent State? I remember that. You, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to have people, regardless how well they're trained, they're going to get panicky. Somebody's going to get hurt. Don't do it. No, no that's, right. that's all I wanted to say. Well, and, and even if, um, you know, there, there weren't, uh, uh, you know, camo dudes, you know, waiting there with guns, uh, almost as soon as you, you know, crossed over that, uh, that, you know, that line in the sand, so to speak, you would still have to walk, oh God, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's probably at least 25 miles from that, you know, uh, from that do not cross area, uh, till you finally get to the base. And I mean, we're talking about it. And as you well know, I mean, that's high desert there. Uh, you know, unless you know what you're doing, you're not. You wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to make it. No. Walking uh, on foot. <laughs> not, <laughs> a, not not even a couple uh, miles. The temperature there is extremely hot. I, I I can tell you that. And there's creepy snakes everywhere. Mm-hmm. Right. And and at night, when the sun goes down. It's really, really cold. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, 
You know, I mean, really, really cold. <laughs> people don't, uh, you know, people have never been out in the high desert like that. They have no idea, you know. I mean, yeah, it's just, you know, it's it's blistering hot in the daytime. But then at night, it's, it's almost, uh, uh, you know, at freezing.